for a minute because there's a lot of developments happening. Uh, the New York Times is reporting that the latest accuser, the seventh accuser, uh, is latest accusation against Cuomo is reported to Albany police. And I'm quoting the New York Times right now. Albany police uh, department officials said on Thursday that they had been notified by the New York State Police and the governor's office about an alleged incident at the executive man mansion involving Governor Cuomo and a female aide that may have risen to the level of crime, which uh, I believe has to do with forcible touching. Um, forced touching. It was Albany police officials said they heard from the state police on Wednesday night after the publication of an article in the Times Union of Albany that detailed accusations leveled by an unidentified aide to the governor who accused Mr. Uh, Cuomo of groping her at the governor's mansion where he lives last year. Um, you know, this is multidimensional. So I, I want to be as clear headed as possible about this because there is real malfeasance with the nursing home scandal in the fact that they covered up the act what they knew deemed to be the accurate number of deaths or the most accurate number of deaths uh, that happened at nursing home and elder care, elder care facilities in New York State, possibly, possibly influenced by hospitals um, who are pushing because they wanted to remove the COVID patients and put them somewhere else because they were over overbooked. Um, you know, but there was an actual cover up there. And that's, I think, which the crime isn't as as bad as the cover up is, because, you know, you think back New York through COVID, uh, the beginning, how these these hospitals were overrun. Um, they had they, they didn't have enough support and it was confusion and chaos. So, you know, if the number of deaths had been reported accurately, it would have been an extraordinary tragedy and Governor Cuomo would have had a deal with it. It wouldn't have looked good, but now it shows that he was perfectly conscious of it and more concerned with his political ratings or whatever else, uh, or possibly his some lobbyists that have uh, supported him in the past. We don't know for sure. There's an investigation underway, uh, two investigations underway, actually multiple. I mean, we now know that um, the feds are looking into it as well, but uh, that has to do with a cover-up. Right. These are now seven women who have come forward at a moment where, you know, these are primarily with exception to, I think, one person. Yes. Uh, primarily all people who have worked under Governor Cuomo in his office, in the administration. So it's not just that he has these allegations against him and many of them are fairly recent. Um, it's that. These are all people who worked for him. And if you know anything about Cuomo, Cuomo's administration, a uh, big part of this is about loyalty. He, he has a circle around him. Uh, he uses fear tactics to keep people loyal to him. Uh, and, and as a result, you know, he's been fairly protected. The, the, Albany, the Albany press isn't always the, the toughest on him. Uh, neither is the New York City press, which has been extremely weakened. Um, they report on the day to day, uh, you know, and, and big stories have happened where they have reported on them, uh, like the corruption scandal involving the Buffalo Billion, which ended up leaving his his closest aide in prison um, and uh, a large donor as well. So, you know, but this is all part of the New York ecosystem for folks who aren't aware. And, and I didn't really touch on this too much yesterday when we did our Cuomo story um, in the last decade, in the last decade alone, you have seen the longtime speaker of the assembly uh I believe he's sentenced at this point. I know he's been back and forth legally. Uh, Shelley Silver for, for corruption, for pay to play. Uh, the former speaker of, of the Senate, uh, Dean Scalos, the leader of the Senate, um, is now in jail. Malcolm Smith, former Senate leader in jail, Democrat. Uh, Scalos is Republican. Um, you have uh, the previous controllers, this is like a little bit over a decade ago, Alan Hevesy in jail. Uh, I mean, this is and not to mention uh, the governors that have, have cycled through, whether it's Spitzer having to step down. And then, I mean, it's just, it's, it's been, <laughs> and then there are pl plenty of other senators as well that have, have ended up in a lot of trouble, uh, whether in jail or had to pay fines or had to step down. Um, this is the culture of Albany. It's always been very protected. And you have these leaders there for a long time using fear, using power mechanisms to prevent uh, deep analysis and reporting and accountability. Uh, and now I, I think because of those, because of that movement, 
is paved a way for a progressive movement, which is demanded, uh, which is challenged really bad actors like the IDC that the Democrats were caucusing with the Republicans in New York. That was uh, devised by Andrew Cuomo. But they have um, the progressive movement that has challenged them and has gotten elected, has been able to put more pressure on Cuomo in a way that maybe if this had happened six, seven, eight years ago, when the other players were still in control, there would have been some sort of power deal. You know, we won't touch it if you don't touch our stuff. And that that's politics. In fact, that's actually how Andrew Cuomo seems he's trying to get out of this. He's trying to basically use the budget, it seems, because they're in budget, this is budget time in, in Albany. Um, he's trying to use the budget as leverage for them not to go after him or call for him to resign. But as of right now, I'm, I'm looking at the latest. <clears throat> I believe there's... How many people have now said that that he should resign? I think we have a, a tweet by Kayla Lacey, uh, who's a reporter at The Intercept who comes on our show regularly. There are 55 New York State legislators that have called on Governor Cuomo to resign. Um, that includes the the, the leaders of uh, the Senate, Andre Stewart Cousins and Carl Hasty, who's the Assembly Leader uh, Speaker. So this is um, Dick Gottfried, who's who is a, a senator. He is the longest serving lawmaker in New York State. Um, this is no joke. This is not just progressives. There are plenty of names on that list. If we scroll down, who uh, campaigned with Governor Cuomo, who Andrew Gennardis was endorsed by Governor Cuomo, um, James Scoofus, uh, slow down just a little bit, uh, you know, Rachel May, she's upstate. She challenged the IDC. John Liu challenged the IDC. Robert Jackson, uh, as progressive. Michael Gennaris is the deputy leader of the state Senate. Um, so there are quite a few progressives, but there are some people on this list that are Nilly Razek, um, who, you know, are more in the center and some have been endorsed by Governor Cuomo in the past. And uh, I mean, this is, this is a big deal. This is a sea change. And so what's going to happen is, you know, if he has to step down, we don't know if he will. I think, I think, my guess is, is that the political pressure is growing so much that um, you may see somebody like a Hillary Clinton speak up and uh, you may, may start with, with Kirsten Gillibrand, the senator, and then go to Hillary Clinton um, and then possibly Senator Schumer. And then the last shoe to drop will be President Biden. If it gets to that circle, that's where I think Andrew Cuomo's budget game, which I didn't finish that, uh, will well, that strategy will not work. So what he's trying to do right now is use the power of the purse strings and say, you know, we'll pass a billionaire's tax, which is something progressive movement has been pushing for uh, if you lay off me, but they're not laying off. More names are coming out. And maybe that's because they think Kathy Hochul, uh, who, who is the Lieutenant governor might pass the billionaire's tax. I mean, this is also really complicated because if he does step down, uh, he has to step down in the middle of a budget negotiation process. I don't know how that works. Um, if he's impeached, which Carl Hasty and the assembly has already said that they're putting together the plans for that, organizing what that would look like. I believe there's only been one impeachment in New York history um, of a governor. It's not looking good for Governor Cuomo right now. He is up against the wall and, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a reason why you don't make a lot of enemies. <laughs> Power only works so far, right? Um, so it, it's hubris. I mean, there's just so much here. And 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 just a little more backstory for folks to know. So he has been, um, who's in a relationship with Sandra Lee, who is the famous uh, TV chef, TV, uh, I don't know if she's a chef, she, you know, her shows. So they broke up about a year ago, I believe, or maybe a little bit over a year ago. And they were not married. Um, and, you know, so this 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 is all kind of happening like, possibly post Sandra Lee, uh, you know, who knows what, what's going on in his head right now, but it's, it's inappropriate behavior. Um, if it does get physical, then this could be criminal. If it, if it was indeed with this investigation uh, and what the woman has said. And the other thing that's interesting about this is that all of these staffers, from what I understand, is all of the staffers have come forward and said that they went through like essentially superiors. They, they complained, they went to HR, they went to, they, they moved forward on all of these allegations, went through the process that you're supposed to go through and they were ignored. 
even senior staffers, very well known, Karen Hinton, uh, has said that she uh, was treated inappropriately and nothing happened. There were no consequences. This is what happens when you have leaders that are not held accountable externally and internally, when you have toxic work environments, which is they're notorious for, uh, when you use the politics of fear rather the politics of, of compassion, understanding, coalitions, ally, allyship. Um, this is essentially a product of the old school New York political machine, a lot of the bad habits that really have not died out. And, and you know, and I'm going to be as bold to even say, um, we have it on the progressive side too. You know, the political machine, there were a lot of bad things about, as we talked about on the show before, Tammany Hall uh, used really bad tactics that carried on through uh, and still to this day are still carried out in some ways if, if it's legal. But, you know, they were there to help immigrants. They were there to fight the oligarchs of the time. Uh, they were a little bit rougher about it. It doesn't mean that the oligarchs weren't stealing money, um, weren't doing bad things too. It was just, it just operated differently. And, uh, you know, as Ron Chowdhury, who's going to come on the show right now, uh, has said, you know, it's, 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 it's bad when Tammany Hall did it, but not bad when the oligarchs did it. But with that being said, when Tammany Hall fell apart eventually uh, after second iteration in the 60s, you know, a lot of these tactics remain. Shelley Silver, who was the assembly speaker, was kind of like, the you know, came up towards the end of Tammany Hall, like his mentors were in Tammany Hall. And so that culture remained, that legacy remained in Albany. And of course, Andrew Cuomo <laughs> was a product of his father's uh, political machine. And, and even if they did operate differently, um, so, you know, it's, it's, we have to be very conscious that even if these people go away, sometimes the infrastructure or the culture still exists. And it's wonderful that we're getting more progressives elected, but we also have to look at the institutions. There are a lot of institutions in New York that still operate in an old school fear mechanic. Like, like it's, it's, it's still dirty. It's still dirty. There's a lot of backroom dealing. There's a lot of, 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 um, horse trading. I mean, people have asked me to talk about the mayoral race and, and ranked choice voting, voting. And I say, you know, there are a lot of really amazing candidates in that race. Um, I'm not sure all of them are even aware that they're being backed uh, really to, to, to boost another candidate because ranked choice voting is really complicated. And we'll see how it plays out. A really complicated situation. Um, it's the first ranked choice voting a citywide election uh, that New York has ever seen. And that happens at the end of June. So we're going to keep watching this. Uh, we are, you know, there's, there's a lot of interesting components to this that we haven't even touched on yet. And I honestly, I don't think this would have happened if the IDC had not been defeated. So um, the IDC, again, were the eight Democrats that were ousted in 2018. And if we did not have more progressives in the Senate, if we did not have Democratic leadership in the Senate willing to step up and speak out, uh, meaning Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins and Deputy Leader uh, Michael Janaris, if we didn't have that 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 ground, um, that groundswell of of progressive senators, then the other senators wouldn't have come forward, and then that's how the political pressure is applied to people like Senator Gillibrand and Senator Schumer. Um, that's how the political pressure is applied to people like Hillary Clinton, which you know is still important, and uh, and Cuomo's very close, and of course uh, Joe Biden. All right, so we're going to talk more about this because it's not going away, and it's a big story. It's huge, it's huge, huge, huge story. Thanks for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. It's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the nomikeyshow.com to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.